There he is. L.A. Ryan, good to see you, sir. And Ryan, I just need to tell you, when I was watching NFL Live, I watch you guys every day, I was having a little bit of FOMO because that set looks amazing. And I've <laughs> never been to Disneyland. Are you having a good time? Listen, it's a great time. It's even good. a better time because I know that Stephen A. is still stuck on the East Coast. Molly, we wish you were out here. Thank but for you. Stephen A. who wants to be in L.A., who wants to be in Miami, I'm glad he has to still be down there in the cold while we're enjoying this great weather. I thought the brother had love. I'm sorry, bro. I thought the brother had love. <laughs> I just wanted you know to marinate on and, and your by, face and, for a moment. And by the way, I didn't know pastors were allowed at Disneyland, that they showed up at Disneyland oh, in the morning. Oh, come on. But, but you know okay. RC's it's clean. Okay. It's right. okay. Let's get it's to okay. it. Ryan, I'm glad you're having fun. Say hi to everybody for me. I'm going to start with you, though, Stephen yeah. A, because we got mm -hmm. a great quarterback matchup. And yeah. wait till we make our picks later in the show. Yeah. And I'll remind everybody, my pick record, much better than his. Do your homework. I don't know. I need to do homework on that. I don't recall. I don't recall. Okay. I don't, recall. don't make me call. I know fantasy don't, don't football, me, you that. No, don't I know make fantasy me call. football with that. I will call Skip no, Bayless. No, 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 I will call them all. Max Kellerman. I will call all of them. Oh, call them. And them. they will call tell them. you. Call I have them. the receipts. Call them them. Let's call stay focused. No, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They've been victims too, as has you. Oh, my goodness. But, uh, right. Who will be the better quarterback, Stephen Ann, Sunday? I think it's going to be Joe Burrow. I think that Joe Burrow is going to be that guy because I think he'll make less mistakes. That doesn't mean Cincinnati will win the game. Uh, I'll save that, you know, I'll decide what, what that pick is near the end of the show. Oh. Uh, but I will tell you that I expect Joe Burrow to throw for over 300 yards. I expect Joe Burrow uh, to overcome a lot of stacked odds against him and put on his own show with it, courtesy of Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and those boys. And um, I think it's going to be a thriller, but I think that this guy is going to really, really show what he's made of, and I think that numbers-wise, he'll end up having better numbers on Sunday. Okay. RC? Listen, again, Stephen A is wrong, but we're used to this. You know, I just heard Big mm. Perk eat him up on the conversation oh, about please. the Nets and the 76ers. Please. And I got to do the same thing right now. Listen, Whatever. I want it to be Joe Burrow. I want Jamar Chase to have a great day. But Matthew Stafford has been playing absolutely phenomenal in these playoffs. And we did see some mistakes, but those mistakes, especially with the Jaquaski tart uh, missed interception didn't hurt the Los Angeles Rams. What we have seen is him make huge plays to Cooper Cup late in the game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, go for over 320 or 340 uh, against the San Francisco 49ers, who we know are a great defense, and make play after play in the high red zone to Cooper Cup. I think that when you look at who Matthew Stafford has always been, he was a Hall of Fame talent. They've now put him in games to be a Hall of Famer, and I believe he goes out, Balls out in this game against the Cincinnati Bengals and Lou Anarumo, who are great defensively. And he becomes the MVP of the Super Bowl and punches his ticket to Canton. This is Matthew Stafford's time. Matthew Stafford's waited for this his entire career, and he's done nothing but show up throughout these playoffs. And Sean McVay will have him dialed in because this is the most important game of both of their careers. Listen, I'm not going to summarily dismiss that possibility. I understand it, but what I'm saying is I'm, I'm looking at Stafford's abilities working against him, at least at some, ele at some increments okay. of the game. He is an elite quarterback. We know it. He can make any throw. And as Dan Orlovsky mm. so eloquently put it weeks ago when he was playing for the Detroit Lions, because he has to remind us that he played for the Detroit Lions. I don't know why he does that. If I was him, I would hide the fact that I used to play for the Detroit Lions. But that's just me. <laughs> the point that I'm oh, it's 16, bro. I understand. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying that he played for the Detroit Lions, and he talked about how he went up to Matthew Stafford one time and asked him, why does he make those throws? Yeah. And Matthew Stafford told him, he said, because I can and you can't. And I see Matthew Stafford, particularly on a stage like this, being that guy with those bright lights, with the biggest stage you could possibly be on in the world of sports, which is the Super Bowl. I see Matthew Stafford going out there and putting on his own show, but also being a bit risque and, as a result, making a couple of uh, mistakes. Now, how much will it cost him remains to be seen. But I'm saying I see him mm -hmm. taking chances that I don't see Joe Burrow taking. So we weren't answering the question as to who would be, win the game. We were answering the question as to who would be the better quarterback, who would put up numbers while minimizing those mistakes. Yeah. I see Matthew Stafford as the kind of guy, RC, that's going to put up numbers and make mistakes. High risk, high Whereas reward. Joe Burrow yeah. will All put right. up numbers without the mistakes. Yeah. That's where I'm going to in terms of my answer to this question. 
Yeah, I know. And that's the, that's the crazy thing, right? Joe Burrow in the playoffs was a different quarterback than he was the first 14 weeks of the season. Through the first 14 weeks of the season, when Joe Burrow was under pressure, he was second in the league in turnovers. And then after that, he turned his game around. And even with the pressure, he's not turning the football over. But with Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Leonard Floyd, Gaines, those guys chasing Joe Burrow and putting that pressure on, he's either going to have to take sacks because we know the Cincinnati Bengals are weak up, weak up front or make those mistakes. In the Super Bowl, you have to make plays, and I think that's why Matthew Stafford has the best day. He understands that you're going to have to take chances. You're going to have to push the football down the field. And think about what we saw from Sean McVay and the Los Angeles Rams when they were in the Super Bowl against the New England Patriots. This team only scored three points. If you think Sean McVay is not going to be aggressive, is not going to want to come out and prove that that first time was a fluke, then you're absolutely crazy. And I think that's why I lean more toward Matthew well, Stafford because I know the type of time they'll put into being well, better. Well, here's the deal. There is no comparison to what he faced against the New England Patriots compared to what he's facing this Sunday. First of all, you were going up against right. Bill Belichick. Now you're going up against Zach Taylor. That's number one. Number two, New England's defense was pretty damn good that year. We ain't saying that about the Bengals up until these playoffs. They were serviceable. They were decent. Mm -hmm. But they really stepped up their game. Here's the interesting thing I want to throw by you, RC, in all seriousness, and I wanted to get your thoughts on this. Yep. I believe one of the reasons I'm so confident in Joe Burrow is because of what he endured against Tennessee. See, mm. do we expect the Rams to have more than nine sacks? I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he was slaughtered against Tennessee. It's hard against to get Tennessee. more than nine, dog. I, I'm just saying, it's he hard was, to get more yeah, than nine. He was, he was slaughtered <laughs> against Tennessee, okay? But they still managed to win mm. the game. So what I'm saying is, okay, there's a possibility he could get slaughtered again with Donald and Floyd and, and Von Miller and those boys coming at him, right? But somehow, some way, they could still find themselves in this game. And that's what I'm looking at. Like, if he had never endured Tennessee, then I would be like, man, he in a world of trouble. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.